Maize, wheat and beans are important staple food in East African countries. Domestic maize production contributes over 50% of national grain supply in Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda. Thus, domestic maize production plays an important role in maize supply in East African countries. Data from East Africa Community on Trade Deficit in 2020 indicate that East Africa countries has a maize deficit of 2.7 million metric tons driven largely by Kenya, which account for 82% of the deficient. Kilimo Trust, uh, basically we see the East African community as one country. So we focus our efforts in uh, supporting production where it is uh, more competitive and also trained where uh, there are areas of uh, basically they, they have a deficit in the, in the various commodities. That's why, for instance, you hear uh, most of the cross-border trade on maize is uh, almost one-way traffic from Uganda to, to Kenya, Kenya being almost a net uh, importer of beans and uh, and. Uh, and maize from, uh, from Uganda. Kenya in particular is a voracious consumer of maize in East African region, thus unable to satisfy its demands with domestic supply. Our local maize here basically is one season maize because you usually get the maize from November and that maize goes all through to June. So we have only one season. So you find that in Kenya we have a deficit of around six months where we have to supplement our local maize with maize from Uganda. Uganda is the biggest exporter of maize to Kenya, although Kenya has a deficient of 900,000 metric tons of maize. Only 26,744 metric tons from Uganda in 2015, exposing a dire situation of a missed market opportunity for this regional surplus country. This was attributed to low quality of maize lack of trust logistical challenges leading to low trade between Kenya and Uganda. When Kenya doesn't have maize, we are made to import a lot of maize from Uganda or from Tanzania. And uh, so our members started going individually to those countries to be able to buy some maize. But we found there were a lot of challenges when people go as an individual. Number one, we didn't know anybody in Uganda. We didn't know who are the producers. We just knew the blockers, either in Busia or in Kampala. So we would send our people or, you know, somebody would go there, just go to the normal market and buy whatever was available. Most of that maize was not actually the right quality. It had issues with quality. But we didn't have a choice because we didn't know anywhere else. They would mix the maize with all manner of things, things like debris, things like maize cobs, stones. Sometimes we would even send money there to the blockers and the money would get lost. That killed some businesses, killed some factories of our members. And it is through Climo Trust that uh, they were able uh, to, to connect us with a producers organization in Uganda called Napeu that is made up of the producers. And uh, it is through those producers that we were able to realize that the maize that we used to complain a lot, that this is the only maize that comes from Uganda, was not true. It was a misconception that we had because of what we used to see at the market. Kilimo Trust through regional East Africa community trade in Staples, React 2 project, intervened through a consortium approach of linking maize producers in Uganda with maize millers from Kenya through Agroprocessors Association of Kenya, APAC. In cross-border trade, uh, the approach that uh, React took uh, first, uh, we started with mapping up, uh, out uh, some of the uh, traders that uh, would help uh, in uh, uh, importing uh, produce from other countries, uh, in particular Uganda. And uh, with that, uh, initially we were we were targeting the, uh, the, the the big buyers, people who are uh, importing big volumes of uh, uh, produce. But this one we let, later on realized that it was not working so well because of uh, bureaucracy, which uh, made it so difficult for SMEs to, to operate uh, under that uh, environment. So as a project, uh, we went ahead to, 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 
to link up with the uh, SMEs, those who are buying but uh, in, a, in, a, in a somehow uh, uh, lower volumes. And that is how we came into contact with the APAC, Agro uh, Processing uh, Association of Kenya. Kilimo Trust has also linked APAC with National Cereal Board of Kenya, which has enabled them to sign a MOU to aggregate their grains and store them into their stores. We have uh, benefited from uh, partnership with uh, APAC and also Kilimo Trust, who were able to organize uh, a forum for farmers and aggregators to be able to look at the green industry uh, within the country and even across our borders. Uh, it was very beneficial, uh, time of learning and exchanging ideas and also looking at the challenges that uh, um, uh, within the green industry. It was uh, a, a good time to be able to uh, interrogate all those areas and look for solutions uh, that will ensure that especially uh, the green that comes into the country is safe from uh, aflatoxin so that uh, all the green that comes in is safe uh, for, for uh, the population in Kenya and also the aggregators within uh, uh, this country, millers and even large-scale farmers. So it was a good time of learning and a good time of interaction towards uh, uh, achieving a common goal. The capacity building offered by Kilimo Trust through React 2 project has enabled maize millers to trade smoothly even during the COVID-19 through social media platforms such as WhatsApp as a result of trust created between traders in Uganda and Kenya. On the issue of the structured trade that Kilimo Trust were able to facilitate between the two organizations is that it was a very big plus to us because the whole of Kenya, it was only APAC and Nepal who were able to do business during the corona period. You see now the lockdown locked most of the processors in Kenya. They could not be able to cross border on the other side. But through our group and through our organization, through Grimo Trust, we were able to do business smoothly because already we had a, a platform through the WhatsApp group. Members from our side could be able to send money on the other side. And members on the other side of Uganda, that is the cooperatives, were able now to deliver goods to us. It was, it was running smoothly and we saw the, the, the goodness of having a structured trade. Because even uh, a period like that one of Corona, we were able to do business, which is of more value to our members and also to the producers in Uganda. Done a very good business deals of around 900 million Kenya shillings. Because most of our members have been buying maize weekly, monthly, where we have been able to accumulate a business of 900 million, that is 40,000 metric tons of maize from the other region of Uganda. Sometimes some factories, some guys within our organization, when there was no maize in Kenya, they would close down their factories, wait for the maize to come up from the Kenyan market because of the fear of going to Uganda. Currently, within that one year that we have, tra we have traded, we've been able to do something like 40 plus, 40,000 plus metric tons. And that shows you, with the trust, how this business is able to grow. So, because people are no longer fearing to send money there, people are no longer fearing that they are not going to get the right quality of maize. People are, no, are not fearing that it is going to take so long for their, consignment, for their consignment to arrive. So that shows you that this initiative has been able to boost the business almost four times, four to five times. We have also realized that the cost of a truck, it used to cost us something like 800,000. Currently, is costing one truck is costing us something like seven hundred thousand, and it is not that uh, the, the amount uh, the, the prices of maize have changed in Uganda. Neither are we giving farmers lower prices. It is that we've been able to cut almost a hundred thousand that used to disappear somewhere along the chain by the brokers and the traders. So that tells you that we are benefiting on this side, and the Ugandans are benefiting on the other side. They are getting better prices. At the same time, we are getting raw materials on a lower price. Due to the benefit of React Two project. Maze millers are requesting for upscale of React 2 project for them to maximize on the deep trade link Kilimo Trust has fostered between Kenya and Uganda. So, my encounter with the Kilimo Trust through React is that I really want to appreciate them. Beginning as a, as a woman to do this business, you see, it needs a lot of energy in terms of carrying the weights and all that. And even uh, 
uh, sourcing, especially the raw materials. Because at some point, I, the way I would hear it is that you go to the, the farmers and you start looking uh, or sourcing, whereby it takes you several days. So I think it was a challenge for me because I'm a family person and I don't think I would be very comfortable leaving my children and my family for a whole week, two weeks. So uh, that was quite challenging, but uh, I really thank God and thank uh, React and Kilimo Trust for making it easier for me. Uh, personally, because I'm not very old in the industry, I'm only three years old, so I didn't know exactly where to get uh, the raw materials from. I would get it from middlemen and the traders. And uh, most of the time, there was always a, a complaint of uh, the quality, the time, the pricing. So I really want to thank React for, for enabling us to visit the farmers, the cooperatives, and even the, even the, the, the the different uh, places. After uh, interacting with the cooperatives and uh, the farmers, I'll go in a very formal way, whereby I can encourage the farmers, we can reason together, and they might make my work easy, even in terms of uh, time frame, and even being a family person. React continues to work. Uh, their, their model of um, their model. I think it's good to think about the traders and especially those who are processing, because for the processor they need to sustain their consumers, and at times they may not have enough working capital to stock uh, the raw materials until the next season. So if they can upscale and see how they can also work with the uh, processors to maybe fund them or loan them so that they can buy all the produce during harvest uh, to sustain their production until the next harvest.